Thank you. Uh, firstly, um, thank you very much for the invitation to uh, be a part of this forum. It's a pleasure to be here to learn about developments in the region and uh, also share with you uh, a little bit about what's happening here in Australia. As uh, many of you would know, the International Panel on Climate Change and the International Energy Agency have concluded that to meet Paris climate goals, there will need to be widespread deployment of um, CCUS technology. The forum that we're part of today is an important group in supporting that ambition and uh, making it real. Um, I lead the team here in the department that provides advice to the Australian government on carbon capture, use and storage. Uh, I'm joined by um, two of the leaders uh, in our international work, Annie Smedley and um, Sarah Ball, and it's a real pleasure to be here with you today. Um, in relation to the question uh, around a practical example, um, we're really fortunate here in Australia to have one of the world's largest operating facilities of its type uh, off the north coast of Western Australia, it's Chevron's Gorgon project. Um, it started operating in 2019 and uh, it um, takes carbon off LNG exports. So it serves an important purpose in assisting Australia serve the region with LNG. Um, it's also uh, a project um, that, you know, its impact is significant. Around three to four million tonnes a year is taken out of the atmosphere. And to make that concrete, that's roughly around 1.4 million cars a year being taken off the road. So there's a really important impact, uh, a really positive benefit. Um, the project uh, was a commercial decision by Chevron, a very large expenditure on their part. Um, in order to show support for that project, to bring it to fruition, the Australian government provided a direct grant to Chevron in the order of 60 million Australian dollars to assist uh, with the project to help stand it up. As I mentioned, it's been operating uh, for a few years uh, reasonably successfully and it is an important part of the CCS framework here in Australia. Um, in terms of the barriers to get this technology up, uh, I'm just reminded of the fact that the technology itself is around 40 years old. It's actually quite old when you think about it from that point of view. But there are relatively few examples of it operating uh, around the world. In fact, there's around 26, and we're lucky to have one of the biggest ones of its type here in Australia. Um, in terms of pioneering this technology in Australia, one of the crucial issues to um, enable the project to proceed was a good regulatory framework. That was set at the sub-national government in Australia by the state government of Western Australia. So from that point of view, to try a technology that's not widely deployed, uh, that hadn't really been deployed at scale in Australia, was a very important decision and signal. One of the other things that's quite important is the size and cost of it, around a billion dollars or more. And as I mentioned earlier, the Commonwealth Government of Australia contributed 60 million as a sign of support to the project. One of the points I'd now like to make goes to one of the points you made in your introduction was around social acceptance of the technology. The, the Chevron project sits in a, in a nature reserve off the coast of Western Australia. So it's off the coast, it's a sensitive marine environment and it's a sensitive natural environment. Um, that will always cause and ruffle some feathers with some groups who are concerned about the potential environmental impacts. That is still an ongoing issue, but the facility is subject to um, pretty good regulatory oversight and its performance is continually monitored. I hope that over time its continued safe and successful operation enables further projects to enjoy social acceptance both here in Australia and around the world. Um, the, the final part of your question uh, related to um, uh, the Australian government's approach to financing CC uh, US uh, projects. Um, as many of you would know, governments have many choices to make when they decide to intervene in the economy and support uh, various technologies uh, and the like. 
Uh, in Australia, the government's decided that CCS is a priority technology to support, and it has chosen to support that technology through the awarding of grants to individual projects. Um, the government selects which projects to support through a competitive process. So applications are requested, applications are received, an expert panel then advises um, the minister, in this case, the Minister for Energy and Emission Reduction, who made some opening remarks to this forum yesterday. Um, recently, um, the minister announced a granting round where six successful companies were announced and they'll receive a share of 50 million Australian dollars. So if you like, that's the Australian government's down payment on the technology in a contemporary sense. In the future, the government's committed another 250 million Australian dollars to the technology. Um, once again, that will be awarded through a granting process. The focus there will be on hubs, large scale deployment of hub technology to support CCUS infrastructure. This is really focused on giving CCS a sugar hit, you know, a running start to make a real impact into abatement in Australia. The other thing the Australian government is doing, aside from the grants, is sending a very clear signal of support for the technology. Uh, recently, the Resources Minister, who I work more closely with, um, has announced offshore greenhouse gas acreage releases where companies can bid to access um, uh, basins to store carbon. So that's another part of um, the Australian government's uh, commitment. I would um, make one um, final uh, comment here um, around the government's support for CCS. The, the examples I have given here really are about infrastructure, about capex or capital expenditure. Um, the government is looking at how to introduce um, through its emissions reduction fund carbon credits. So if you operate a CCS facility and you store a tonne of carbon, you can get um, government support for that. That work is in development at the moment and should be finished later this year for rollout and operation. Um, hopefully that gives you a sense of the various things happening in Australia, the level of commitment and support for this technology. Um, aside from the domestic work I've talked about here, the Australian government has appointed Dr Alan Finkel as the Special Advisor on Low Emissions Technology to the Australian Government. He will be out there looking to broker and partner agreements with countries in the region, but more broadly, for collaborative projects. Um, that is more on the horizon than something real now, but once again, it's a demonstration of Australia's commitment on this technology. Thank you.